celebrating supper. Celebrating supper? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Celebrating with supper. Do. Huh? Take a picture now. Uh-huh. Don't, Mammy. Uh -huh. That's nice. So, oh, you have your eyes shut. I did not. Did you get it? They were half masked. How's that do? See if you can get this in and everything too. Turn it around. Doc says, "Congratulations." Whatever. Yeah, she, you should have combed her hair. Oh, can you get all that in? Well. Grandma and Moore and Grandpa Moore are here. In the flash. Still good. You don't have to. It doesn't have its own. You want it done? Yeah. You can do it on. If it needs it. Mm -hmm. Am I supposed to open this now? Do you want to open it over at the reception? Do they have the tables for you?
with our heads. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity that brings friends and families together to honor the graduating class, the 8th grade graduating class here at Gibson Adventist Elementary School. We thank you for the guidance that you've given Marie and Danny and Tim and Spencer through their lives to this point. And we ask that you be with them to the rest of their lives and guide them in the decisions and the choices that they will have to make. We ask your blessing on these proceedings and we ask you to be with each of the graduates the rest of their life in a special way. You may be seated. We're happy to welcome you to our special event this evening, our graduating class of 1992 in 8th grade. We'd like to welcome the parents, families, friends, relative supporters of Gibson Sunday Adventist Elementary School. We hope that this program will be a tribute to God who makes our school possible and the achievements that our young people have accomplished as well as to the parents and staff at our school and all those who support our school. We just pray that this program will be a tribute to all of them.
Students have worked hard at least once in a while this year, and we have a promotional certificate for those students.
uh, was that he always wanted to find out how things worked or how he could fix them. And one thing he said was, what's the matter with this thing? He got frustrated with it. He couldn't figure out how it worked. And he said, what's the matter with this thing? I thought that was uh, quite a question. He was 23 months old at the time, about two years old. And Danny liked Bible stories a lot. And we started to read to him when he was, oh, just uh, still under a month old, I think. I know Kathy spent time rocking him in the rocking chair. We still have that rocking chair. And uh, she would hold him and read to him at that young age. But he, she would read My Bible Friends. And in one of the stories there, it talks about Jesus in the storm. And it talks about how the disciples in that boat were scared and fearful. And they cry out to the Lord and said, Lord, save us, we perish. Well, one day, when he was about two years and eight months old, he went into the garage with Kathy, and it was a dark, dungy garage, dirty floor. And he said, it's scary in this garage. Lord, save us, we perish. <laughs> Danny's always had a sense of humor. And that's something that we really appreciate about his life. He's a real tease and likes to laugh and uh, make jokes. He must get that from Grandpa Moore. But uh, anyway, he's a lot of fun to have growing up. Danny was born September 2, 1977. And we were at Andrews University, going through school, living on a shoestring. And he was supposed to be born a year later. But he was born a year early. You know that water around these Adventist institutions has something in it. But we, weren't, we were not uh, at least a bit disappointed in his arrival. And it was, he was born at uh, 10.52 a.m. <laughs> And I had the privilege of being there. He was born by Caesarean. And so I was able to be right next to my wife, watching the surgeon do the cutting. Luckily, I was a doctor's son, so that didn't bother me a bit. I don't know how many husbands would be able to handle that. But I was watching the whole procedure. And when Danny came, he didn't look like either of us. <laughs> and I wondered if he was really my kid. <laughs> But I, I loved him from the very moment I saw him. And we named him Daniel Lewis. The name Daniel means God is my judge. And only in God has Danny and our family found our defense. Because God is a fair judge. And we named him Lewis because... We live in the great Northwest, and we love the Northwest, and Lewis and Clark Expedition was the one who opened up the Northwest, and so Danny is named after one of the great explorers here in our great Northwest. And so Daniel Lewis is our firstborn son, and we're proud of him tonight. And we pray that God will continue to bless him in his life as he grows day by day.
Redmond, I think, in 19, well, a year later. And she had this dog who she uh, was continually playing with. And she'd take a spoon out of the uh, silverware drawer and she'd, go out, she'd put sand for that, that dog. And that dog would jump into all kinds of acrobats. So she got pretty close to animals. And she was on the horses before we know it. And uh, I think she, she still enjoys the horses an awful lot. Uh, I'm sure I'm pleased that she's graduated from eighth grade. And, uh, I don't know what else to say other than I'm proud of her. Uh, 
he loves to go huckleberry. And he's getting to be quite a huckleberry picker. I gotta really hustle to beat him anymore. He does really good. We're, uh, we're very proud of him and we just hope the Lord will continue to bless him and that he'll give his heart to the Lord. So that way. So congratulations. And the only reason I'm saying good things about him is because he's bigger now. <laughs> Everybody had to find a rock. 
and then we put it on top of this pile of rocks and made it a little bit taller and a little bit taller. To this day, I wish we could go back and visit that place and see if the altar is still remaining because it was a very special spot to us. We lived there in the woods for about five years, and then we thought, well, let's go to a place where we can grow something. Klamath Falls is so cold, and the, the winters last forever. Other than sagebrush and juniper trees. <laughs> yes. And so we decided to move, but our house never sold. We thought, well, we'll leave that in the hands of the Lord, and we moved. We went to Coquille, and we spent one year there. We moved on Timothy's fifth birthday, and we can remember carting a cake with us. Yes. Not even being unpacked, we got there tired and we well, had my, to have a little birthday. Well, my former eighth grade students had made it and I think she burned the frosting, but we had fun. We were too tired by then, having traveled all that way. Other stuff with us. We had a birthday anyway. I forgot one thing about before we moved, I'm going to throw it in anyway. Children sometimes can do things at the worst, most opportune times. And he and Larry one time just about made me exasperated beyond words when we were living out in the woods with so much dirt around. Kind of like here, so much dirt. And it was just minutes before sundown. And I tried to have the house clean and, you know, rushing around with these little kids. And, and they were playing outside. And I went out to check on them, and they were handfuls of dirt. Just, oh, it was all over in the hair. But this is not the right time. So we had to stop everything, bathe them, and start over again. But anyway, back to Coquille. We lived for one school year there. And, uh, the wetness didn't agree with Ed's health, so we had to move. But while we were there, we had a really neat opportunity to stay in a doctor's home. He was uh, gone for the year, and we had this humongous house that we lived in. Humongous. They played hide-and-go-seek there and hid all over the place. It was so fun to play hide-and-go-seek. It was probably a 3,000 square foot house. So they ate airplanes off the balcony. Mm -hmm. And one went around the corner and landed in a cake one time <laughs> on airplanes in the top. To this day, they might have airplanes up in the rafters in that house. <laughs> one thing that, uh, then after that one year, we moved to Madras. That was the one other school year that we were here, and we lived out on Bear Drive, uh, again in the country. Uh, Timothy had fun there, sleepwalking. He's always had a little problem with sleepwalking, and it is so strange, some of you who have sleepwalkers. They come down, or they come out of the bedrooms with this glassy stare in their eye. And you say, Timothy, I think you better go back to bed. Okay. He walks back, back to bed. And he went back into the bedroom, and pretty soon he comes back in the living room again. He has this pillow under his arm. And he lays it on the couch, and then he lays down on the, on the couch and pulls the pillow on top of him. I said, this boy is mixed up. He's not quite with it. So we have to take him back to the bedroom again. He's done some pretty strange things in his sleep. He comes and, and it, he talks to you even. And he looks like that he's with it, but his eyes are kind of blank and staring. So you know what? This isn't safe. The other thing I remember about Bear Drive was that I was trying to teach the children a little bit about navel oranges. And I ex had explained it to, them, to them that a navel orange is called a navel orange because it has a navel on it. And so we thought we had that kind of down pat. And about a week or so later, Timothy looks at the orange and he says, now I know why this is called a belly button orange. <laughs> Then we moved it back to Klamath Falls. Because our house never sold, we went back to Klamath, and at that point, on the seventh birthday, we remember being very special because he was born on the seventh month of the year. His birthday was on the seventh day of the week on Sabbath. What were the other sevens, Jim? He was born in 1977 originally. And being a Sabbath, we went on a family uh, drive that day. It was the most special Sabbath for his seventh birthday. There was a beautiful rainbow and a storm and hail and everything. It was such a neat time that we could remember with him. Then he started school when he was eight. His first teacher wasn't one of his parents, but it wasn't too long until he had his mom for a teacher. And he's had the uh, fortunate experience of having his dad for four years now. He had you for three? Two. He had me for two. Two. Okay, I've got to get everything straight. Um, he asked to follow in footsteps of us. I had my dad for seven years as a teacher, and my mom for three. And then I had my dad again when I was working on his master's program. I hope that doesn't happen to Tim. <laughs> he was in school, and of course, you know, had to be a good student. Either that or he'd hear about it when he got home. 
and once in a while. We just gave him that special look, like, I don't need to take that from you, you belong to me. And that wasn't very fair. But he survived. As he's grown, he enjoys mechanical things. He enjoys his music and his clarinet. Um, he does occasionally like to listen to a uh, laser game. <laughs> Even last night. <laughs> um, and he enjoys playing basketball himself. When we were living in Klamath Falls, I had a series of evangelistic meetings, and he was baptized at the end of that series. And the pastor who baptized him had the same middle name as he does, the name of Edwin. You might know where he got that. <laughs> I'm done. Are you done? <laughs> we're done. We should. We just feel very, very pleased that we have children, period, that Timothy has just been extra special to our hearts, and we're just thankful that he's been able to get this far, and we wish the very, very best for him.
living in his wonderful things just like David and when giants nine feet tall come into your path you're gonna do just fine I'm so excited that you asked me to be here for your graduation that means a lot to me and here are a whole bunch of people who love you very much they came just to tell you that they believe in you that they love you and that they wish you the very best and perhaps through the years that come, you'll still seek out some advice from these people. Maybe you'll seek out some support and some more love, and they'll be happy to do it. And I want to challenge you as you go from this night to continue to go with God. That's my challenge to you this evening. After all of this, we have some diplomas. I say after all of this. Actually, that isn't just referring to what we've done here this evening, although this has been important. It's been the years of work that these students have put into their education. There are more years for them ahead. This is just one step. We never quit growing and learning. I learn probably about as much as the students do each year. Not necessarily from the textbooks, but maybe from some of the students themselves. And each year we change and we grow. Tonight is a recognition of a milestone in that educational process through which we go throughout our entire lives. As we were talking about who perhaps I would give the diploma to first, uh, we talked about alphabetical order, decided maybe that wouldn't work because there are certain ones that would always be last if we did that way. And we thought, well, maybe backwards alphabetical order. And then what we ended up doing was the way uh, I heard that a professor used to grade papers. I just took them, closed my eyes, mixed them up, and threw them across the floor. And the one that landed the furthest is the one who's going to get the first. strategy to achieve excellence in our nation's schools. America 2000 affirms our belief that education is the key to advancement for nations as well as for individuals, and its success will depend on the sustained cooperation of parents, students, teachers, public officials, and members of the community at large. This effort is vital to all Americans because nothing better defines who we are and what we will become than the intellectual and moral education that we provide for our young people. Each of us has a role to play in building a better America. And that's why it is so important for our youth to commit themselves to doing their best in school. The winners of the Presidential Academic Fitness Awards exemplify this.
If my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray, then will I hear from heaven. Hi, Danny. Mm. Jump. <laughs> There's jump Tim. Back. Where's Stevie? Where's Stevie? We're at Crater Lake. As you can see, there's a beautiful lake. What are you guys looking at? Look! Somebody was dumb enough to throw an apricot and it landed right there. Ooh. There we are. Looking at the four boys who are staring down into the valley at Milo Academy. There's the campus. You can see the boys dorm on the lower right hand corner. The gym just north of that. And then the cafeteria. And girls dorm at the top of the picture. And to the side, the church. And then the administration building. And then, right there, industrial arts. Over to this side, we see the greenhouses. No, that's not the greenhouses. That's the industry. Thunderbird furniture. And over here are the greenhouses. But this is the campus of Milo Academy. in a pretty spot. Behind uh, Milo Academy, we're headed towards the academy right now. From the spot that we were up on top of the mountain at, we're looking down on top of uh, Milo Academy. Pretty country over here. And it's nice to live here when the weather's cool. It can be awful humid and muggy. I guess that's enough. This is the bridge over the Umpqua River. Back onto the highway. We will turn right here towards the academy, going back towards. Mattress, actually. Traveling east here. Here we come. And there the sign says Milo, Adventist Academy. Yay, we're here. Why? Why have we never been here before? Here's Milo Adventist.
already flowers. <laughs> There's Larry's three cars. That yes, they're great. beautiful. Yes. There's the Valiant, mom and dad, look. That's what it looks like. I'll take more pictures of it for you. Isn't it beautiful? <laughs> take a look at its teeth. Doesn't need even doesn't even need the dentist. To think all this car for a hundred dollars. I just can't believe my luck. And with a car like this, who needs women? It's beautiful, it really is. I mean it just looks a little ugly, but it's really not. And this car is over for hundred dollars. Besides, beauty is only metal deep. See that? Got hurt. But I didn't do it. How do you open this? That's where you put the gas. See, it has hubcaps too. Now we're gonna go inside. So watch my hand. The doorknob works. Mom, you like my upholstery? It looks nice, I know. Works. Everything works. <laughs> As air conditioning, the windows work at least. They roll up and they don't fall down. Unless I want them to. You roll them down, they kind of fall, but you know. So this is what it looks like when you drive. You look down and you honk the horn, yes. And people get in your way. Radio pumps out thousands of watts every second. That's not my car over there. It's so beautiful. Big and huge. Now there's my headliner. Is that classy or what? Look at that, guys. Check out the surface rest and the beautiful roof light. My visor's well padded, yes. It's my car. No, I know what you're thinking. It's really not as bad as it looks. It's a good thing. There's my speakers, that's where the thousand watts per second go. Trunk, the rest. It's shiny. I didn't really know. And there's, there's some spectators that just love my car. You like it, don't you, Steve? Yeah. You love it, it's cute, it's beautiful. All right, we'll show them the engine and then we'll go away. There's my missing hubcap, but it has good tires. Watch Tim try and figure out how to open a hood. To the right of the Plymouth thing, there it is. Thank you. Is my air conditioning compressor, which is all unhooked. There's my battery. Oh, there, now you're gonna read it, see? It's just a very simple engine. There was no radiator in it. There's a radiator right there. Flat six, put the oil in right here. All six spark plugs lined up along the side there with the distributor, the alternator. Should be easy enough for somebody like me to work on. It's not even in bad shape. Anyway, I'll see you later and I love you and I'll see you some year when I get done working. There's the flag flying over Central Milo Campus. The center of the campus. Girls dorm over there, and gymnasium and cafeteria to the north of it, and there's the boys dorm, and over here is the church, administration building back over here, and industrial arts. You know, say hi to your mom, Larry. Okay. Hi, mom. <laughs> He's not really on the TV. It would break if he was. There's the church. Isn't that pretty? Going in? Here we go in. Here we are at uh, the plant that produces the wood for the furniture, Thunderbird Furniture, and the maintenance section. Some guys there working at maintenance. 
And right over here, we have the boiler house. But the boiler has been broke now for shut down since school is out. And that's why the special offering was raised to fix it, $150,000, but only 15,000 have come in. And if they had 150,000, they would be able to re rebuild this boiler and get it operational for the school year. They have two boilers, one oil and one uh, sawdust um, fired be able to have enough heat and energy to run not only the dorms in the campus but also the industries over here with the flowers. It was just rebuilt. It cost $2,400 just to rebuild this motor. So you can see that this motor was used for the boiler system and the parts are very expensive. That's why they needed $150,000. We'll go up to the flowers in just a moment. The industry that keeps us, that thing very successful is Milo Farms. And Milo Farms runs a nursery, greenhouse, and orchard here at Days Creek, Oregon. And there are the landscaping, the front of the area where the greenhouses are. They're remodeling a lot of this area, as you can see the construction going on here, where the offices will be and, and uh, the front of the facility. And inside, we will go and see some of the operation inside. You guys hard, hard at work? It's her and Jennifer Artigas. Hard at work, huh? Yeah. <laughs> What's this? Excuse me. I'm not. <laughs> there we go. Take a pan view across campus once more. We see that the reasons for this institution were to educate young people in the work of the Lord. And the maintenance manager put it well when he said, I see myself as a missionary in the evangelism. It's himself. Hi, Mom. It's after mail. So if you see this, I'm not eating between meals. <laughs> um, did he get the tour inside the church? No, not really. Just looked inside the doors. It's really pretty church. Yeah. It's one of the nice buildings. And so the maintenance man, what is the maintenance man's name? Charlie, uh, Todd Mason. Todd Mason said to me, he said, I see myself as an evangelist. I thought that was pretty good for a maintenance man to say. That's what, that's what he said. Is that's he, what he told me. That was the, the big guy. The shorter guy. Which guy is that? Not not the big guy. No. Uh, uh, Carlisle Mason. Carlisle Mason. That's the one. Carlisle Mason Todd's said that. Todd is that. And anyway, I thought to myself, that is really what every teacher and dean and administrator should have as his goal for an academy. And we need to make that same kind of commitment as constituents in supporting our young people. In the Pathfinder hike, and as we can see, the two boys hiking away from us. Hi, Jason. Hi. Let's see here. There's Michael. How are you doing on your hikes, guys? Fine. Good. Ah. And there come the rest of the crew. And even little Ryan. Look at Ryan. Hi, Ryan. He has a backpack, too. Day pack. Go faster, Ryan. Get going. There he comes. Angela and Donna and the chaperones. <laughs> hi. Say hi, Ryan. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> and 
There's the back trail. So quiet and peaceful. The creek is down there. Here they come. Here they come. Here they come. You hiking? Down this Climbing all over the sides of the mountain here. And there's the pretty valley. Come on, Ryan. Come up here. He's way up ahead. Here are the girls. Way far behind, and we're crossing the creek. Isn't that pretty? Here's Britt taking his snooze after lunch. These are all our leftovers all over the place. We're taking a little break. We had a little service. And we're resting until we go hiking again. This is all of our stuff. Gear, paraphernalia, whatever. The boys are up on the hillside way up there. And the girls are on this other hillside. Way up there, there you can see them. So the girls are on one side, boys on the other. Can you imagine that? Here comes Donna. Hi, Donna! Hi, Donna! Hi, Donna! Kylie. Hi, Donna! And way up behind there somewhere. See the other girls? They're hiding behind that tree. There are the boys up there. Michael makes five boys on the side of the mountain. Here we are at Sahaley Falls with the group from the camp. We're out at workers retreat. What time it is? Uh huh. There we go. Oh my. Do you want to go first, Dad? Upper viewpoint or lower viewpoint? Uh, let's go to the lower viewpoint first. Dad, can you go down there? Can you go down there? Huh? Huh? Can I? Yeah. This is the Haley Falls. On the Mackenzie River. Isn't that pretty? Those are the boys.
How's it go, the boys? We're going down to Kusa Falls now. We hike down this trail and you can see the water in the background. It's so beautiful. came down and now we can see the falls aren't they pretty look at the little water rivulets coming out of the side of the wall David and their little boy G fixing the kite. Sunday morning down at the beach again to discover who is the best castle builder. That's our house up there. That's where we're staying. And it's not going to be us if we don't get going. And so far the first team are the little boys here. These three boys are the first team. Steven, Ryan, and Brandon. And there's their castle works. Their design looks like this, as you can tell. It's supposed to work in a certain way. I'm not sure exactly what their 
design is all about, but we see a wall coming out this way with a ditch in front of it. And there's a point on it, and it goes out the other way. It's symmetrical in design. We're going to pile a bunch of sand in the middle, and that will be their castle. Right, no, Brandon? No, that will be our castle. Oh, their castle that's, is that's back there. This is a... Okay, their castle is back there. I see. Okay, so... Davey! They have a lot of work yet to do. We need some more tools over here. And Daniel and myself. And we're beginning to design this. As you can tell. Piling up the sand. Again, notice the bulk and the shape of it. It's diamond shaped with another diamond shaped uh, water break in the front. As you can tell, we've progressed quite a ways. There's two ditches around to protect and to drain, as you can tell here. And uh, we are about ready here to uh, finish it off. Point on it like this? And more or less, yeah. There we go. And there's a drain out to the sea. And the tide is coming in closer and closer. And now as we go over here to the other team's design, we look, they're trying to make a similar design, but their, their bull works and their bulk is a lot less. They're mostly designing theirs by putting in obstructions to the waves. And uh, this is where their flag is going to go. And they might win too. We're not sure. What design is going to work the best? But most of their bulk is right in front. So they their technique is resistance ahead of their flag. Ours is resistance at the flag. Right, Mike, so. right. We're gonna have to go that real high. And ours is also resistance they're, at the they're, flag. They're they're redesigning theirs as they go along. Yeah. Uh, you can tell that they are modifying their plans. They're looking over and stealing ideas from us, no. and they do not want to admit this, but it's right. obvious. We need to go that higher because the water is the highest, I think. See? He just gave them some specific instructions. They need to build it higher. That was our technique, and they're they're really trying hard to, to come up no, with no. a good idea here. That was Mike's technique. That, that one. That was Mike's technique, huh? So, you guys are building Mike's technique. We well, we'll see who wins here. Uh, For the competition? What do you think about this competition? I think the south end is going to win. The south end is going to win. But see, he's prejudiced. He's already been evaluating. He shouldn't give any indications of how he judges here. So we'll have to scrap this whole competition and start over. Wins. Oh, I see. Camera is going to be the judge. Yeah, because the camera has to, to show the wave knocking on the last step. Okay, so now uh, this man here is not the judge after all. He is the uh, he gives advice to both teams. He's our technical assistant. Right. Yeah, this is ours. He's going to win. You bet. Mega Mountain. That Uncle Jim's team. And there's their flag. It's all stacked up there. There they are, standing together. All right. They have a lot of enthusiasm. They have their bulwarks, and the waves are coming in right now. As you can tell, this big wall in front. And then there's the flag. You bet. This is the thing that's going to win. Jim's Fort. They're still building on the bull, bull, bulwarks, I guess. And here's ours. And Dave's still building on ours. There's the beach and the rocks and the tide is coming in. 
got me trouble. Boy. There's our mini bulwark. I'm gonna say every other every other wave is gonna be the fortress thing. The waves are coming in. Then it delights it and the water flows around yeah, and out. Hey, look. Well, you can't do it anymore. We can't build on ours now because the wave hit. fast now. We're retreating. We're retreating. We're retreating back. But the telephoto lens Please takes us in. There it is. The rest of the record will be by camera. And there's Mike's. You guys didn't have then you're right in the way of my camera. There's ours. There's, a, there's a Stevie on his bucket. Theirs is getting washed really well. Theirs might collapse before ours does. What? Theirs might collapse before ours does. <laughs> no, this is not an uh, unbiased journalist here. Well, tell me, expert, what do you think the prospects are for each of these castles? Well, I hate to say this, but I think the one in the middle probably has the best chance. Um, it's the, the sheer design. Doesn't matter the height, we'll take care of that problem. Next, this one will go next. It has a very similar design, because it has that special breakout in front. The other one, well, well guys. fate will tell us. Here it goes. Uh-oh. Go back out, here comes the wave. Way out there at sea is standing the Sentinel. Stephen Moore all by himself on that bucket guarding his castle and the sea is coming in and washing out each granule of sand into the sea and there's Mike standing over his little creation and there stands all alone the castle of David Wyman's team and Danny's team and there's the lonely flag feather waiting to win. And the sea washes in and washes out, but the channels around it do guide the waters away from the sand pile. See, their wall is almost down, and that was two or three waves ago. It was up, and now it's almost down. The flag is going to fall first, I think.
Cars is holding up pretty good. That team is about ready to crash. See, it's crashing out there. Rumbling down. Rumbling down. Hey, the pieces are falling. There's that little one. Mike's lonely sentinel. And then there's ours. The waves washing around it. We'll come back and report in a little second. <laughs> ready to fall. It's almost ready to fall. There it is. This one is going to make it fall. There it goes. Now this one over here. Let's see when that one falls. First, second place. Yeah, first, second place. First, second place. First, second place. At least second place. But I see. Ah, baby. Oh, I see. I'm going to go back. Look at That's all shallow up there. Yeah. First. Oh, There's the witness standing guard. This team's is a lot bulkier and bigger. That one is washed away almost. And that one is crashing. It is crumbling down to the ground. There's only a little bit left. And it's crashing now. There it goes. Well, no, it's still standing. And here comes another one. There it goes. There it goes. There it goes. It's leaning. It's leaning. It's going to go right now. There it goes. There it goes. All right. One more wave will do it. Yeah. There it is. One last wave. It's gonna crash. Here it comes. There it is. Uh oh, it's still standing. Can't believe it. I believe it. <laughs> this one is standing up nice and tall compared to that one right over there which is about ready to give in and cave in and give up. Watch. Here it comes. Our design is a lot better. And it's leaning. <laughs> it's leaning. <laughs> it's leaning. <laughs> I can't believe it. It's leaning. It's leaning. There she goes. There, it's leaning over. Leaning still. It's leaning still. It's hard to see that feather. Just hanging on there. Just hanging on there. 
There it's hanging on and it crashes. And it's dead, it's dead. See it hanging over? That big wave hit it and it's dead. It is dead. Ryan, you're in the way. Still standing.
next time around it's going to get her. It fissured! It fissured! It fissured right on the feather. So it's going to go any time now. And look at there! She can't even see it! Yeah, I took it, I panned that a little bit ago. It's going to go any time. Oh, these two are going to combine! Whoa! Oh. There she goes! It's on! It's on! It's still on! <laughs> ah, yes, dead meat. Oh. on Thursday morning getting ready to leave on our camporee at the Madras Pineville Pathfinder Club. And there are our kids and parents waiting for the bus to come. There's the U-Haul trailer that is going to be pulled behind this vehicle. Clayton Warman is in charge of that. Behind the trailer is my pickup truck. There's an extra luggage. And Ben Moore is driving that. The bus coming up the road. We gotta pull in here for everyone. This is the vehicle that everyone was looking forward to riding in as we head out to the Campery. Hi Lee. Hi Ben. Hi. You think you can handle this bunch? Boy, I don't know. It's kind of wild. It is a wild looking bunch, I'll tell you. I guess the bus will lead the string. Pardon me? Okay. We got Seat belts on. Yeah. Your hat Jennifer, you know the Spencer, you know the people from Pineville? They wanted to get lost so, Hi, they, can, so they can make uh, um, get bows and skirts and everything. Isn't that beautiful? That is so pretty. There's David. Hi. And there's Danny. There's Spencer, and there's Timothy. The guy's looking through. All right, we're on the Ma Hall of Mosses trail. Big trees. Look at those big trees. Spencer looking at that tree. Let's get out of here. They're singing the Wiener Man song. Of the log. And then over here there's a tree that split two trees in one. There it splits there. Goes on up. And there's the moss man himself. That just burped. <laughs> There goes Jennifer, she's always... Look at these. Look at those trees full of moss. Pastor, don't you think there could be cougars around here? Oh no. How am I going to get down? I'll go 
go down before you go down. Oh, boy. Oh. No rescue team. Oh, yeah. Dad. What? Look at all this. Oh, my God. 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 Where's Spencer and David? Do they keep going? log does now they're all mature and the roots are all lined up with the where the log used to be. Oh dude. Look at that. Gale. Yeah. Isn't that cool? Get some logs. Nurse logs. Nurse logs. Nurse logs. <laughs> oh, Can you thing. get in there? Hi. Yeah. Hello. And who's back there? David and like, we'll him. Zoom in on you guys. <laughs> and it is. And I'm crawling out of the roots David. of life before the roots of life give way to the tree of life. Right. Ta-da! Oh. I'm gonna do two flips with a half I'll twist. twist down. Okay. Did you film him? Did I film him? Yeah. I sure did. Oh, <laughs> whoa. Only guard, prepare to close the colors. Pathfinders present arms. Close the colors. Here we are on Hurricane Ridge looking northeast. We're high up. How about would you like for me to walk up this thing backwards? We're looking northwest on the other side of this little ridge. Hurricane Ridge. You can tell.
though. It's Canada. There's a boring walk too. There's Canada, there's the Straits. And there's Port Angeles down there. Okay, Dad. Why did they call this red? Jason, you need a big because you can see the hurricanes coming in. Oh, just film, let him take whatever he wants. Is that hard? Yeah, very good. Suspenders. Garbage dispensers. Now, what are we doing? The fog is moving in. Why is it coming in here? Because the wind's bringing it in. Yeah, it blows it in and fog us up. Yep. That's where we're going to go. Wow. Well, where else are we going? Let's see, where else did I want to go? I wanted to go to China. Well, I thought we were going to go instead of this place. I don't know. Maybe we're going to... Uh-oh. There's a glacier. Here we are. What do you see way over there? Here's Mount. Oh. Some glaciers, huh? You're panning uh -huh. too fast. There's a glacier over. Uh, panning too right fast. There. Yeah. Okay, let's go. Oh, bye. Stop. What's the weather like? Snowy. How much snow do we have? I have to go get a ruler, but... About four or five inches? At least. This fun? Yeah, we've got that run up clear up to the road. Let me see you do it. We even got a pile of snow up on... You like the snow? Huh? You like the snow? There's hey, Dan. Dad. Yeah. Lassie likes it. Yeah, Lassie likes it. Snow and Madras. Second year we're here. First year only two inches. This year six inches. It's great. Hey, hey, hey. Hi, Lassie. Go get him. 
Go get him. Go get him. Go get him. <laughs> what are we doing here? We're yeah, sledding. Did you just wipe out? No, wiped out once. Of course I wiped out. What do you think I did? Yeah. Hey Cam, you mind if yeah. I use one of yours? What? Oh. 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 Well, I think I'll take Stevie's example. I think he hasn't wiped out yet, so. Ready? Well, here it all goes. Comes Tim. Oh, Nelly! And he pulls out of it. Goes Angela on her tummy. Hi there. Hi there. Yeah. What do you like, huh? Like that? And he wipes out. There goes Spencer. That's a wild ride. Oh yeah, right. Yeah, right. You got Go Tim. Angela. I'm gonna go down right behind you guys, so wait for me. You just better not wipe out. Oh man. Go last. Say when to go. Ow, that one hurt. Oh fuck! There's Steven. Hi. Oh, right. Where's Brandon? There goes Brandon. We're up hiking at Rimrock Springs <laughs> on Sabbath, July 31. There's the mountain. See three sisters over there through the trees. Ah, oh, look at the snake. Brandon, Ryan, and Stevie almost got bit by it. I was closest. It's rattler. Ew. It had a mouse in it, Ben, or something. Mouse? Poor guy, we stole his dinner. And his life. And his... And his that and shows how many years old it was. You count five, the numbers. Five. Okay, go wash your hands in the water. At the beach. And we are 
Camping at Honeyman, August 9, 1993. With Karen. Where did she go? Oh, there she is. And our kids, and then Angela. There's Angela. Angela and Steven and Kim, Danny, and Tim is over there. There's Kim. There's Danny. There's Angela. Grandpa. We're all at the beach. The two sisters. <laughs> Grandpa skimming. Ah. Hi, Angela. Hi guys! I think he's gonna throw this frisbee. Or a little frisbee. Yeah, you're not recording. Yes, I am. I don't hear any sound. Oh my god! Okay. Okay. We'll start over! And you tell us who wins. Where are you going? Okay. I think Angela's oh. won so far. Push her over, Stevie. <laughs> Little people in an exercise, and they're going to do touching their toes. One, two, three, four. Here we go. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Very good. Okay now, children, let's see you do some of your fancy sit-ups. Here we go. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. All right. Way to go. He always does one extra just for good measure. Gets an A plus. Okay. What else can we do with these short legs of ours? We can uh, do some clay shooting. Oh. Whoa. Kick. Here we go. Shoot that bird. Pop right back up. <laughs> Pull. Pull. 
Well. <laughs> Damn, he did all right. Angela running through the puddles. Take your life jacket off. Want to take your life jacket off? They keep you warm. The life jackets yeah. have to keep you warm. Jack, I did it. 